Yo, this finale gave me everything. It gave me my life. It took my edges. It resuscitated me. It was everything I needed it to be. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up? I'm Jaded Nerd, and I just got to get right into it. This finale was phenomenal. Blanca's chilling. She's working in the apartment doing nails. She doesn't have her salon. And, you know, you can just see that she's coughing. She looks like she's sweating. She doesn't look well. And Pray Tell shows up. They're talking. And it was so good to see them make up. I love their friendship. I love the fact that they can curse each other out. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, they're friends. Okay? And you got the highs and lows. And their reconciliation was amazing. And I was glad to see that. But Blanca's not well. She looks like she has pneumonia. And she can't breathe. She can't talk. She's, she's labored. She's not well. And they finally get her to go to the hospital to check herself in to see what's going on. And it's reversed. Because it was pray tell at one point. And now it's Blanca. Once Praytel gets his head wrapped around the situation, he gets Blanca's address book. He's like, look, girl, I'm going to reach out to everybody in the ball scene. I'm going to let them know where you are. We're going to have somebody here with you at all times. You're not going to be alone. So everybody's down to the hospital. It's Electra and Lulu and Angel and, and everybody. Everybody's down there. And this is when we get Electra getting an opportunity to read Pray Tell. Basically, she lets Pray Tell know that, look, representation needs to be for everybody and y'all are in a position to do something, He's talking about him and the other MCs. So let's do something about it. So I want to talk about Angel and Poppy, old, old Whitney and Bobby Child. Oh, I don't know what to call them, Child, but they was lit these last few episodes and I wasn't feeling it, but Angel hasn't been getting booked. She gets herself together. She goes down to Mrs. Ford because that's how Angel is. And she's like, what's up? What's good? Why am I not being called? That's when we find out that during one of the photo shoots a while back, one of the queens from the ballroom scene recognized Angel and spilled her tea and basically told everybody. So then all of the people, the the the, the potential clients, all of the, the editors, the magazines, they felt like Angel lied to them. And because they weren't ready for a trans woman to be the face of whatever, whatever, and their own phobias and prejudices and whatever, they just decided that they kind of blackballed her. They cut their ties. They didn't want nothing to do with her. And it kind of hurt the Ford agency. And Mrs. Ford had to break it down for Angel. Let Angel know, look, girl, you, you, you're, you're done. You're done. They're looking at it like it's a breach of contract. And unfortunately, the world is not ready for you. You get what I'm saying? And it was really hard and it was really tough for me to see Angel break down like that because that's her dream. That was her dream. She was living her dream and it was taken. The one thing she feared the most was being clocked. Everybody finding out. And that's exactly what happened. Remember when Electra read Pray Tell about the lack of representation and diversity and the ballroom categories and all that good stuff? And they have a good idea. So Electra is teaching Pray Tell and the other members of the ball scene, the guys, how to walk in heels. And this was one old Kiki and Kaka child. One old Kiki and Kaka. It was one old Kiki and Kaka because the tables have turned. Electra is reading them the house boots down. Whatever you want to insert, child, go on ahead. There's old Mad Libs up in here, but she's letting them have it. And for once, Pray Tell can kind of see how difficult it is to come up, present yourself, walk straight up, all of that. All of the things that he calls out the other queens and the other ladies and whatever when he's calling these categories and he's reading people for filth. It didn't feel good to be on the receiving end. And I think that was super important. So she's letting him have it. She's letting all of them have it. And he gets frustrated because, you know, that's pray tell. And he's outside and Ricky comes outside. And we get a very good discussion and conversation about toxic masculinity and how it can affect people differently. And I got to admit, I hate to admit it. But they're cute together. Ricky and Pray Tell make a very nice couple, especially when Pray Tell was talking to Blanca earlier and was basically saying that, you know, Ricky gives him the energy and, and being able to feel young and vibrant and, and just a fresh perspective. And perhaps he's imparting wisdom onto Ricky. So that's the symbiotic nature of it. It happens a lot. I have to eat a little bit of crow. Out of thought, by this point, Ricky would have hit it and quit it and moved on, but he hasn't. So I have to give credit where credit is due. They look very nice together. But let's get to the meat of this episode. Let's get to the Mother's Day Ball because that's where everything goes down. The Mother's Day Ball kicks off and it's a house 
versus house versus house battle. So you've got Ferocity, Wintour, and Pendava's Child. So the first part of the house versus house battle was Runway. And Jasmine Wintour, Chocolate Barbie, she's fierce. She's everything. She's the next Electra child. She's just stormed, marched. She, she gave us everything. She snatches grand prize. So the next category is Realness. And Mother Electra decides to come out and teach the kids what realness is all about and class and elegance and dynasty realness and all that snatches grand prize. That's what Electra does. She snatches trophies. And I got to call this our real quick in this review. I'm, I didn't want it to be long, but whatever. We haven't seen Electra's red wagon all season. I waited and I tweeted at Electra. I tweeted at Pose. I said, are we going to get the red wagon? She's been snatching trophies low key. Okay. They've been shading her house, but her kids have been fierce. We didn't get to see the wagon. I'm very sad that we do not get to see our red wagon. We did not get to see our mother pulling her trophies away like she always does because she bring it with her every ball. And we didn't get to see that. And I was not here for that. But Mother Electra snatches grand prize. Then we get to the final category and that's voguing. Basically, Florida Ferocity snatches grand prize and Vogue shuts it down. That's what's up. And I gotta say, low key, high key, whatever you want to say, House of One Tour. Aside from looking fierce and being fierce, they come out. They showed out. They snatched trophies. They are not playing. They are like, yo, House One Tour is fierce. And I think the fact that they're so fierce is how Electra got Mother of the Year. Here she is, snatching yet another trophy. Mother Electra One Tour. The legend continues. I was sitting there like, wow, like seriously, like I'm not being hyperbolic. I mean, I was enjoying the episode so much when Tor did it for me. Towards the end of the episode, we get a couple of things that happened that I really liked. And one of them was when Blanca shows up to the ball, even though she's not that well, she's getting better, but she's still not that well in the wheelchair, whatever, whatever. But she actually does candy sweet refrain. She she walks the category and she comes out giving us Whitney singing the national anthem. OK, slaying it. She gave us blended makeup child. She gave us the bob, the nippy bob, the, the young, know, the hair, makeup, the look was on point. And then when she got to that crescendo and she came out in that red, I was like, yes, ma'am, Pam, this was one time Blanca really did it and gave us a little bit, a little bit of electric tease, a little bit of grandiose, just a little bit, just a little bit. But I was here for it. She snatches the trophy. That's what's up. Everybody was glad to see Blanca, even though Blanca is sanctimonious. And she's holier than thou sometimes. And she wears you out. You root for Blanca because Blanca's good people. At the end of the day, Blanca's good people. We finally get to the best part of the episode. And that's when they get the category of Butch Queen up in drags. First time at a ball. And Electra is at the MC podium. And she's giving me my life. She's giving me my life because she is going to be pray tale. And what she does is the entire panel is typically the guys in the ballroom scene. They're all going to be walking child. But she calls out all the girls, all the women, all the trans girls. She calls them up, you know, Lulu and Candy and Kiki Pendavis and, and Mother Blanca and all that child. That panel was lit. The concept was lit. The fact that the tables have turned, okay? They're coming out. They're walking. Electra was reading the house down, reading house boots, whatever. Electra was giving me my life. She was shady. She was catty. She was witty. She was on point. She was an Amazon standing nine feet tall at the podium. I lived. It was funny because they finally got a taste of what it's like to walk out there thinking you're going to get your tens and you don't get a 10. I, I, I hollered. I hollered. And at first, Pray Tell was in his feelings. He really couldn't get into it. He was still up in his head. But then he got into it. He enjoyed it. And I got to call out Ricky. Ricky got up in drags and was pretty. Child, he can still get it. Take the makeup off, take the wig off, child, and let's hop on pop. Incidentally, Lamar Wintour snatches that category. Okay, again, House of Wintour, in case you didn't know. Hashtag Wintour is coming. Hashtag Wintour is here. Hashtag no basic bums over at House of Wintour. But look, last part of the episode, Blanca's waiting on Pretel, and she sees these two very young people, two very young kids, about 14 years old. And she's like, what are y'all doing out? And they basically let her know, look, 
We got kicked out of our homes. We met up at the piers and her heart broke. And you can see it on her face that they're 14 years old down to the pier with nowhere to go. And Blanca has new purpose. Blanca is like, look, are y'all hungry? You know, just, you know, talk to me. What are y'all doing? How are y'all surviving? Don't feel shame for that. And she's able to pay it forward like Electra did for her. And, and it was important. So even though Blanca scared me, I thought it was going to write her off because she got sick child and, and, and everything like that. And there was so many things going on in the episode and Angel dealing with her, her, her career and, and, and just the fact that, you know, that got taken away. But I want to give a quick shout out because I thought the episode was amazing. I thought the episode was so good. The writing is so excellent. Everybody acted their butts off. It was so well done. The cinematography, the lighting, just the, 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 the wardrobe, just the color scheme, just the, the 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 color grading and the way they shot it, everything was top notch. Last season was amazing. This was several steps up from that, and that's very hard to do. But I wonder what y'all thought about the episode. How did y'all feel? How do y'all feel about what happened with Poppy and Angel and the fact that Poppy came through yet again? for Angel and got her a booking in Berlin and they know her tea and it's no problem. She don't deserve them fighting. How do y'all feel about the fact that Blanca got sick, but she's got some new purpose. There are new kids. There will be House of Evangelista yet again. So I'm looking forward to season three for that. And how do y'all feel about Mother Electra at that podium child reading and chanting and commentating? She was chanting. Come judge for me, judge for me, come judge for me. Yes! Yo, almost at the queen now. But look, put everything in the comment section below if you can, please. Throw a like on the video, subscribe and share. It's greatly appreciated. I'm Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to y'all next time.